so in 2000, uh, end of 2012, there's a lot of political scandals in Estonia, uh, where like a finance scandals, you know, some corporations, you know, buying politicians and things like that, just the standard sort of thing that happens everywhere. And uh, uh, the president of Estonia called on the grassroots, uh, um, you know, the people of Estonia to, uh, you know, to come up with ideas how to fix the political system. You know, his idea was that the best people to come up with ideas was the grassroots, you know, a bottom-up approach instead of the parliament trying to reform itself. So, so, uh, so, uh, so what he did is that uh, uh, he, he called on the grassroots, the grassroots, you know, grassroots uh, in Estonia responded by actually setting up your priorities, you know, locally, and they made some changes to it, things like that. And, uh, and then uh, they launched a campaign of coming up with ideas how to fix the political system in Estonia. And, and, and I think six different categories, you know, finance and all, all sorts of other things, constitution, the different things. And uh, so uh, then uh, about 50,000 people uh, took part uh, and uh, close to 2,000 ideas were generated. Uh, and out of the, those, uh, uh, you know, 21 or 22 ideas, were taken into a, uh, like a real live assembly meeting where 300 people were randomly selected uh, as sort of representatives, as a sort of representative sample of the Estonian people, uh, like randomly selected, uh, to process those uh, 22 ideas further. Out of this idea, uh, out of this process, 18 uh, sort of law proposals came out, uh, which the you know, President Mia then put forward in the parliament. And the, you know, president has the power to actually put forward laws, you know, for discussion. So, so he uh, re referred to himself as like a postman. He said, "I'm the postman between the grassroots and the parliament," you know. And uh, and and many of those things are still being discussed in the parliament. Uh, two, you know, two have become law now, uh, and one is very likely to become law if it's not already. And uh, so, uh, at least some success has come out of this process, where. Uh, it, you know, there's been a reform uh, in the finances of the political system where smaller parties are not, uh, you know, excluded as much from the and uh, So that's been changed. And also there's a way uh, for 1,000 Estonians to sign an electrician, electrician uh, to a set in the parliament or in the, uh, in the uh, government. Uh, so, so, uh, so those two are actually like have become law, you know, now in Estonia. So, 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 so I think that's pretty uh, an interesting example of how you can use the internet and technology to actually make real change, uh, you know, in a legal system in a whole country. And to clarify, we didn't do any work right. on on the on the website. We just uh, supplied the code of your priorities. And there's a few emails going to and fro to questions. So we did like maybe a couple of hours, three, four hours work with helping them out, but they did it like all, almost all of themselves. Okay. Um, can you please tell us a bit more about uh, the Citizens Foundation? Uh, it is uh, your priorities, uh, the single most important project or uh, what's a bit the history of the Citizens Foundation? Well, it's better maybe to look at it that way that your priorities is the software and then we have all kinds of projects that almost all of them, well, all of them use your priorities to some extent and most of them uh, use only your or your priorities in combination with citizens meeting. It's like your priorities sort of at the, at the heart of it. So the main projects that we've been working on, obviously those have been mentioned, which is uh, Better Reykjavik, and we consider Estonia as well to be one of our projects because the software is like what we've been producing. And uh, then uh, obviously we mentioned the NHS project, which is uh, still being worked on in the UK. It's called NHS Citizen, and it's intended to connect the National Health Service with the citizens. And what am I forgetting? Yeah, and, and I think I think that you know the Citizens Foundation, uh, you know, obviously we're a non-profit, uh, you know, here in Iceland, and uh, and it's very much, uh, uh, you know, we, we look at ourselves uh, as uh, sort of providing an alternative to uh, you know what's happening, where uh, you know large corporations are actually now uh, you know sort of becoming a big innovators of democracy and you have uh, you know voting systems and uh, and electronic voting systems you have uh, 
for example, there's a Spanish company working with Microsoft called Skittle, uh, which has been very successful uh, uh, and they're supported by big corporations. And they are basically going into uh, uh, you know cities and uh, and municipalities and you know you know countries and effectively offering sort of innovation and democracy, and uh, which uh, which which is all good and set. It, that's one option if people want to go that way. But the Citizens Foundation is very much about uh, creating something that's sort of a bottom-up approach to, uh, you know, to innovating democracy. You know, we don't believe that, uh, uh, you know, the, the, uh, you know, the opportunities that we have now in terms of, uh, you know, changing democracy and improving democracy, it should only be in the hands of corporations and government. Uh, and especially because one of the big problems in the world today is that uh, uh, the balance of power, you know, between, you know, you have government, you have citizens, you have corporations, you know, citizens' voices are, you don't carry much weight now. Even the social media and, and all of this, it's still, uh, you know, the, the majority of the power lies with uh, the people who have the money and the resources, the lobbyists. And so, uh, so we are very much sort of an, an uh, you know, driven forward by ideology of of uh, of improving democracy from the bottom up, from you know, with with the people and the ideas coming from the people, not uh, improving it the way that you know uh, suits Microsoft best in terms of selling it to a city. Uh, can you please tell us a bit more about how uh, we have listened about the aftermath of the 2008 crisis. So how these ideas evolved uh, during those events, because um, some of the information that uh, we have here is uh, different. So we want to know a little bit firsthand how it has it had implications on the concept of the democracy and how citizens' engagement should work. Mm. Yeah, that's a big question, actually. But um, what is happening now here in Reykjavik is that we have a new majority, which is basically the same one that was before with the addition of uh, one member of the Pirate Party. And there is now a new uh, committee committee for uh, for democracy and uh, and uh, something else. Oops, it's, but anyway, yeah. the, which the transparency. the transparency, which the Pirate Party is leading. And we're now in the process with the city of Reykjavik and with other people, both from inside the city and from, from outside, in evaluating the last three years, how it's gone, what are the experiences learned, and uh, what should be done to, uh, to uh, go forwards in a, in, a, in a way that's really, yeah. There, in, in other words, there is like expectations of a, uh, of a uh, sort of a, a, a good evaluation that would really answer a lot of your questions. Yeah. Well, well, well. I think the biggest problem, uh, you know, that you know that we have identified is that, you know, when you talk to people about democracy today, you know, both in Iceland and you know, Europe and other countries, a lot of people just say, "Oh, it doesn't matter what I vote for," you know, it makes no difference, yeah. you know. And uh, so, so one of the big, big things that we're fighting is apathy. You know, that people don't believe. You know, we, you know, you know, we tell them we have.